All right, welcome to the inaugural video of this channel where we go electric and beyond. We do have one other video up right now actually from a while ago, which was actually filmed initially for my other channel, which is uh, more theme park based. But uh, we're gonna start off a new series now going into the new year with the electric and beyond material, which is mostly sustainable transportation, EV, stuff like that, like this guy here. And of course, we're starting the entire channel off with a repair video. So I'm going to show some things here in the beginning, talk about what happened, and then uh, we'll get to the repair, and then hopefully it should work. So on my other channel, I've had quite a few videos uh, about driving around with EVs and specifically also fixing my former Tesla Model S, um, which I have since gotten rid of. And so now all we have left is the Model 3. I've not had to repair anything on it really until now. So let's take a look at what that is. So getting in, we'll show what's going on and then I'll talk about how I noticed it. If we look at the screen here, I'm not touching it. My hands are back on the camera and uh, it, it kind of has calmed down right now, but it's been super freaking out doing its own thing. All right, so here's a little bit about what happened. I just got back from vacation of flying home uh, back to this area in New England where I'm from, but right before, like three days before vacation and see, I don't know if you can hear that, but the air just came on. All right, so as I was saying before the poltergeist so rudely interrupted me, I was driving home from work. I'd put in the address, everything was working fine. And then like five or 10 minutes into the drive, I noticed the screen start like moving around and things weren't quite working right. Uh, I've had a screen protector on there for the longest time, which is this guy here, it looks just like any screen protector you put on your iPad or your cell phone. I knew that that had some cracks in it already and I noticed one really long one all the way down the middle. So I thought maybe the screen protector had broken in half and it was causing some like erroneous uh, touches where I thought I was touching the screen. So when I got home, I peeled that off and then I was looking at the protector and could not find where that crack was. Then I looked a little closer and I'm going to try and pull up a screen where we can see it, if we can see it. And this is what I found. All right, so we'll see if we can see if I can get an angle that'll show it. Um, I don't know if it'll really show up on camera, but basically right here, all the way down, is a crack right down the screen. And you can see there's a little chip if it'll focus on it. So right here, there's a little tiny chip, which I think has been there for a really long time. So I don't actually know what caused the fracture or the crack. Um, you know, if there's a little tiny chip here, just the right pothole or, or speed bump could cause a stress fracture on it. But I did do a little research and actually uh, it was uh, Ashley uh, that did more of the research than I did and found a bunch of different cases of people talking about just kind of driving and then just a phantom crack down the screen where most of the time they were able to bring it back to Tesla and because there was no obvious like trauma to it, it hadn't gotten hit by anything, it was just that crack that most of them were able to generally get it replaced for free. So here's the situation with ours. It's December 22. We bought this in uh, October to December 18. So we're right at four years, but we're also at about 60,000 miles. So it's already out of warranty. So we knew warranty wasn't gonna be an option. And then upon looking uh, at some estimates, uh, we got an estimate of it was around 15 to $1,800 to get it replaced. Uh, and honestly, it was gonna be like 10 minutes of work for them. Uh, now, I've done quite a bit of work on my Model S, so we thought about, could I do this myself? So I replaced my center screen on the Model S uh, a couple years ago, and there were some extra added issues. Actually, uh, I replaced the center screen and the instrument cluster. The center screen I had to bring in because there was no way I was going to be able to do that myself. But the instrument cluster, we ordered one because it was starting to delaminate. And then after I got it hooked up, there was some software issue. So I had to kind of Frankenstein 
a combination of the old one with the new one to get the MCU chip, uh, or at least the chip. I don't know if it's called the MCU on the uh, cockpit instrument cluster, but I had to basically make it think it was the old screen just with the new glass, and I was able to repair it myself. I did a little research, and it seems that the screen, this screen here in the Model 3, the MCU is a different component, so the screen is purely just a screen. So it seems that I should have no issue doing it. It realistically would probably take me about six minutes to do the swap. So before we left for vacation, we ordered one that we found through a, um, a third party dealer, like a used uh, car part thing for about 300 bucks, ordered it and came from San Diego. So it came while we were on vacation. So it's inside in the box, haven't even opened it up yet. So let's go in and take a look at what we've got there. All right, so I decided to bring it outside because it's actually a lot better lighting out here. So uh, the place that we got it from is, if it'll focus, straight six auto parts down in, well, it's Oceanside, but it's near San Diego. And uh, so they've got it wrapped up with a fragile uh, tape. And then what I noticed is right here on the box, they actually wrote, somebody wrote iPad screen. So I can only assume that they probably did that so that way in transit, somebody would see iPad screen so they would know that, you know, it's something fragile. So, got my knife already, and let me go ahead and slice through it here. And let's see what we got. All right, so I can see the screen here, looks like, was packing peanuts, so that was smart. Take it out here. All right, and they've got it wrapped in bubble wrap too, so good. Let me leave it right here. I'm kind of doing this one-handed. Um, since I'm holding the camera, of course. So I've got that, let's see. Uh, it's wrapped in a bunch of saran wrap, so let me take my little knife here and gently, gently cut through it. This is a used screen, so uh, I'm gonna you know, make sure to inspect the screen itself for any damage and then um, look around and see, make sure the screen is not cracked and make sure there's no um, functional issues with it. There might be some cosmetic issues, but um, that's fine because I need the working screen. All right, I'm going to set the camera down real quick so I can use both hands to unwrap this and then we'll look at it. All right, so screen unwrapped. Uh, again, probably not showing up greatly on the camera, but from what I can see visually inspecting it, I don't see... Uh, any scratches on the uh, screen. There's no damage, no cracks, so that's good. Let's flip it over real quick. I did notice as I was unboxing it here, uh, so this little cover here, it's uh, obviously it's been removed, so there's a little bit of damage here, but it's hidden. You won't be able to see it anyway. I'm not so worried about that. A uh, little bit of some, some marks here, again, behind the screen. Don't care about that so much. Uh, I actually thought it was going to come with just the screen not the actual mount part so that's that's helpful because i was wondering how i was gonna swap those two the screen looks good i have already previously removed the screen in the model 3 to see what it was looking like because there's a, a, a number i needed and i'll talk about that uh, so we'll get ready to uh, start swapping them out. So the other thing I, I uh, didn't mention yet, uh, I forgot to when I was inside talking about it, is even though the screen is basically going haywire and it has varying times of whether it's kind of smooth and all right, and then it just looks like someone has hacked in and is completely moving the screen around, the car is totally drivable. I can put it in park, I can put it in drive, put it in reverse, all that. The screen's functionality is mostly gone uh, because of where my particular crack is. Almost no response on the left side of the screen and very limited response on the upper right side of the screen. I can do a little bit through the app, but you know only what the app can control. The wipers did at one point start going off all on their own because it was set to high. So I had to get really creative with getting the screen up where I could get the menu and the wipers were up in the upper right and then I was able to turn them off. But at least I have been able to drive it. I was a little nervous on the first day because even with the door closed, I couldn't get the screen to turn off. So I was concerned it was gonna continue to run uh, the battery down because it would basically be alive and awake at all times. It did finally turn off, so that was helpful. And I could not get into the screen to do the auto power off because I couldn't get the menu open. 
Uh, so let's head into the car now and I'll show how we took it off. Very minimal tools needed. And then it should be a really quick swap. So all I used uh, before to get most of the screen off, I didn't completely disconnect it, um, but I got most of it done was just a 10 millimeter socket wrench, a T25 star bit, and then I think I needed the, the regular Phillips, or I'm sorry, flathead screwdriver for something. Uh, and then this is just a little screwdriver, which where that is needed is on this right here. You need something small enough to get in, but sturdy enough to be able to pop the cover off. And my little like plastic rubber laminate tool, kind of like the flat um, thing that I've used with like screen protectors and stuff, wasn't quite sturdy enough to pop it off. I got that off and uh, so the little connection that's right here it's the uh, like the cabin air sensor temperature sensor ambient temperature sensor uh, and that's what this little dot is um, so you got to remove that carefully to make sure that that still works and now I've got the cover off first I need the the 10 millimeter uh, to take out the two uh, bolts that are holding it in both <laughs> bolts out and of course the screen started going a little haywire climate control came back on so let me turn that off and then just takes a little wiggling and then it'll slide right out and then all I have now right now see if I can get a good get a turn around here ah perfect now let's grab the camera. So essentially all we've got here now is uh, the main wire harness. Here's of course the cable for the temperature sensor. You've got the two mounts here and a lot of people put on the movable swivel mounts and they go right here on these two. And then it's just, a, just this wire harness that has to come out now. Um, so that's where the two star bolts are to take off this cover, which, you know, let's try it. Uh, I should be able to do it while I'm holding the camera. So you gotta get that off so you can expose the little clip that's holding it in place. Let's see how I can slide this around. that loose and then just this little retaining clip figure out how to pop this guy off I think it's just on with tension that's all oh let's move the screw Perfect, I got the clip off, and then it should just be this little clip right here to release the, the pressure or the uh, connection, the tension. Okay, as I suspected, all it was was just this little clip here popped right off, and now the screen is completely detached, and I'll bet out here I'll be able to get a better view of the actual crack, if I get the right lighting, let's see. Okay, yeah, I can see it right there. Pretty good, going right down the middle of it, kind of right here. So that's the culprit that was causing the issues. So again, if we put them side by side, you can see that even though I had to take the mount off here, it actually comes with it, so I can just use the new one uh, if I prefer. 
All right, so I've got the cover popped off of the new one. And of course, I'm gonna have to pop off the uh, mount. So now let's get this retaining clip off. Actually, I uh, know I don't need to. I just gotta wiggle it through. There we go. And again, I guess I didn't necessarily have to swap that out, but since it came with one, I figured I, I just would. Let me turn the hat around so I can get a little more room here. So obviously before I fully install it, I'm gonna plug it in, take a look at it, make sure everything looks right, that the screen's working. From what I remember, it should take, perfect, bam. It was gonna take a couple minutes, uh, although it was really a few moments to get that up. I'll let it kind of do its thing, see if uh, I'll get some connectivity with it. So I'll pause this while this is kind of booting up and then we'll come back and make sure that everything works function functionality wise. So while the new screen is still kind of doing its, uh, you know, startup process, I was talking about there was a letter that I needed and I don't know if we're going to be able to see it here. I'll try to focus on it. Um, all right, it is focusing on it. I just don't know how big it is. There's this little chip with this little QR looking code thing right here. Actually, it's a cover. It's not a chip. And it's got a number with a letter at the end. And mine ends in a D for dog. Um, so I found another video of a guy doing the same thing. And his was a D. And the way he described it was I could put in any screen that's a D or higher. So the one we ordered, I believe is it's a K, I think, or maybe an I. So it's higher than a D, so it should work. If I'd have found one that was say a C, it likely would not have worked. All right, so after some slight minor behind the scenes panic of uh, just waiting for several minutes and nothing happening, like the screen was there, I would shift, it would show everything, but I, I would touch anywhere on the screen and nothing was working. Um, all I did was just the two button reset with these guys here, let it power cycle through, and then as soon as it came back, now we can see that everything seems to be working as I touch through everything. Obviously before, like, when I would touch this, nothing was happening. Now it's working just fine. I can, let me just touch through everything here, make sure. I do actually have a software update. While I was waiting, I did just put the mount back on and then just slide it up here. It's not even screwed in yet, as you can see. Um, and then this wire still has to be connected. So I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, and then the car should be 100% fixed. All right, so installation complete. I ran to the store to get some parts for another car. Uh, and so I took the Tesla to make sure everything was working while I was driving, moving around. Everything is fantastic and perfect. Again, it's a super simple repair. So if you have something similar that's happening, if you're not afraid of turning a couple wrenches, you probably could do it in less than 10 minutes. Uh, you can buy the screen and save the money from having to go to the Tesla service center, assuming you're not in warranty and it's covered in all that if you're like me and you're out of warranty. So again, as I mentioned, it's kind of like the inaugural video for this channel, despite the other one we have. Uh, so I hope to put out more videos as we you know, go into the new year here with some more uh, electric and beyond stuff. Uh, so we'll see you on the next one.